Hi, this is Steve Magnus with High Performance West, and today we're going to talk about sprinting, in particular, sprint mechanics. So what I figured we'd do is we're going to take a look, couple looks at a couple of my middle distance runners in slow motion and break it down and see what they're doing, um, where they might need to improve, and what you should focus on for running fast. So if we start this one here, so I'll let it play through so that you can get a, see a sense of this athlete's stride. So he's doing a 150 uh, meter kind of acceleration right now. Um, his split for the last 100 was like 11.3 or something like that. So again, pretty dang quick. So let's go back through and break that down a little bit. <laughs> so... As you can see here, this is more of a power 800 meter type runner. He's run 149, split 46 on the 4x4. So the things that I look for when I'm looking at sprint mechanics are, are a couple things here. So if we go to his max extension, let's get to where it's a good stride in front of us. Here we go. So if we go to right here, we'll start there. You can see extension off the ground, okay? <clears throat> a lot of people have a concept of like triple extension of knee, of hip, knee, foot. Um, you don't really need that. And that's kind of a myth to a degree. But what you do need is good hip extension, which leads, uh, leads the way. What do I mean by leads the way? You see his hip extension is pointing in this direction, right? His knee is kind of driving through, which shows you that <laughs> he's in a good spot there. Um, so he's really uh, applying force to the ground. So if we go back here, right, you can see that. So if we trace his leg, ground contact right there. Main thing I look for here is this um, knee and ankle are in pretty good alignment. So a lot of times what happens is you see if he hit while well, he was out here, the ankle is a little bit in front of the knee, but he waits, makes contact, ankle under knee and that puts them in a position where he can push right so if you look at runners when they sprint they're generally pushers or pullers uh, pushers will look like this pullers what would happen is this leg would be straight out a little bit here and they'll try and pull at the ground puts a lot more pressure and stress on your hamstring um, some athletes get away with it if they've been doing it for a long time there's some natural tendencies to push or pull but in general, unless they have some biomechanics um, liabilities, I tend to think that, especially in the middle distance area, most of your good athletes are pushers, right? So what does that mean? It means right here, good hit on the ground. Then you can see on this right side, good hip extension. So really pushing. Okay. And then what you see here is if we watch this recovery leg now, Good hip extension, recovery leg automatically kind of folds up, gets a nice high tight recovery, okay? The recovery happens almost like a slingshot. So if we get good hip extension here, there's a stretch reflex on this, this right hip, which allows the recovery leg to come through. And what's nice is by the time his next leg touches the ground right here, Okay, he's in a good spot, pretty good spot, where his knees are almost coming through at the same time, which means that he doesn't have too much length in there, right? So sometimes when people get too long on their stride here, what happens is they might hit like that. Like let's say his leg is hitting the ground here and his opposite knee is all the way back there. Well, then he has to rush the let the knee forward, the knee through, while trying to apply force at the same ground. Here it's much more synced up, you can see. All right, so when their knees are both together, very good body position, right? Pretty dang upright, slight lean maybe, but pretty dang upright. So let's look at one other thing is arm stroke. So look how it syncs up here. So arms and legs work in, in concert here. They're synergistic. You can see, watch this arm and watch this knee, okay? 
once they both stop extending, right? About right there, you can see we've hit, hit max knee lift right there and max backwards um, elbow kind of lift on the back side, right? So that's what happens, right? You have this nice syncing up of upper and lower body to deal with some of the uh, horizontal forces or twisting forces that occur. So we look at syncing it up. Same on the back side. If you look at this leg compared to the other one, <coughs> right? Stops up front when this thing reaches top end. So you can see nice sinking of upper and lower body. So again, what does that mean? What do I look for? What I look for is hip extension. So where they are, where are they projecting when they drive? Are their hips dropped and look like they're sitting a little bit? Or are they projecting at a good angle forward? Okay. What do they do when their knee comes through and stops, right? Knee reaches maximum height. Do they start extending this hip down and backwards so that they're applying force on the ground, right? Because we want a good, like, hard hit on the ground because that's where speed comes from is force into ground, right? So you can see here this athlete, he comes through, then a good hard hit, right? And then upper body synced with lower body. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at one other athlete to see a slight difference here. So we'll bring that one back. Again, 150 is coming off the curve. <coughs> so slightly different athlete here. <coughs> but hopefully you can see a little bit of similarities and a little bit different. This athlete's younger, not as experienced. So hopefully you guys can take note of a couple things. So let's break it down. Not quite as long, but we'll break it down just so you guys see. All right, let's go a little forward. So let's look here. There's push off. So again, hip extension is all right, okay. His projection is pretty solid there, okay. But then what do we notice here? is he gets a little out in front of him here. So you can see a little straighter line here. So he's going to have to wait, reach, and like pull a little bit. And if you see here when he touches the ground there, knees are a little bit um, more separated than our first athlete, right? This leg hasn't come through and come close to his butt, although that doesn't necessarily have to happen. But it's not where it's the point where it starts driving up, okay? And if you look at body position here, it's a little more city, right? So you see more of angle like this versus more straight up and down when he's there. Not bad, but you can see that angle kind of keep, right? So watch his hips here. Watch how they go, right? He goes in to push, and right here he's not probably in the best position to push, right? Because he's a little bit sitting, right and then doesn't quite get the same synced up extension as our ath our first athlete hopefully you guys can see that stuff <laughs> so the sinking isn't quite there and you can also see if we had a head-on shot shoulders are going to twist a little bit why is that well this, uh, what's going on down here on the legs is synced with up here. And you can almost see it if we pay attention to this foot down here. You can almost see some late stage, what I'd call like torquing twisting. So watch that foot. All right, frame by frame. Pushes off and the foot has this late stage twist there at the very end, right? So he's probably trying to force a little more push off out of there then he needs to which is probably what keeps him delayed here so he tries to get a little more push off the ground if you could see from the back end you'd see the foot kind of do this twisty thing 
And then because of that, right, he's a little delayed, slightly more delayed coming through than our first athlete. Again, nothing huge and major, but just a couple things to look at. And then I, I think to sum this up, I think what we look for is, again, how in sync they are, how do they look when they're applying force into the ground right here, how do they look when they're looking at extending the hip upper and lower body in terms of syncing things up <coughs> what you might notice i never talked about is like lifting the knee i think lifting the knee is a kind of result of how much force you're putting into the ground right so if we get more force got to come up a little bit higher because this right here again stretch reflex on the hip here so that means it kind of shoots through like a slingshot it gives us but our upwards um trajectory and then final point you can see he gets a little twisty up here as he tries to apply force down here for a little bit too long so it's almost like his lower leg gets twisted here and his upper body if you pay attention up here upper body see that last twist right there and this, instead of coming straight down and back, um, has to go in, out a little bit. So, again, very good runner, very good mechanics, nothing horribly bad, um, but just so you can see the differences. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Head on over to highperformancewest.com. Um, you can also see some of the similar stuff on my site, scienceofrunning.com, or hit me up at uh, Twitter, at Steve Magnus. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. So more stuff like this. Thanks, guys.